to the week six prayer record of Intro to Marketing. This is the week that covers ethics, law, and is the last time I see you before the exam. So in the lecture, what we're going to do is take the first hour to talk ethics, any questions and content you have for that, and the second hour to do a recap, a rehash, revisit, pre-exam preparation. What you need to be aware of and you need to focus on in your preparation for the exam for this chapter is that ethics applies to marketing and because it's an applied element, it takes place in each of the individual decisions that we make. That to be an ethical marketer requires you to have a pricing strategy, a product, a promotional approach, and a distribution channel approach that is within the bounds of the law and the social norms that you are operating in. It's not enough to Think of ethics as a standalone module that you plug in. It's a behavior, it's a pattern, and it's a process. It's a way of thinking, it's a way of seeing, and most importantly, a way of doing. So to break it down and give you the stock definitions, law and ethics are connected but they are not the same beast. The legal system has requirements that are stringent, strict, enforced and arbitrated through courts of law, judicial decisions and other ways and means by which formal sanctions can be applied against you as a marketer or your organisation. Ethics, on the other hand, are not necessarily so strictly implemented. It is possible to have a law that is unethical, it is possible to have an ethical conduct that is illegal. Much of the basis of law reform comes from the point where the ethical and right thing to do is in contrast with the legal situation that is either statutory defined or defined as part of the rules and governance. So from a marketer's perspective, what we tend to look at here is we have certain legal requirements that we must adhere to. The law of the land for marketing is covered by issues such as the Trade Practices Act. There are specific regulations governing the advertising of high-speed motor vehicles the promotion, distribution and pricing of tobacco products, the promotion of alcohol, and soon, given how things are going, the promotion of high fat and high sugar food. But at present, given high fat and high sugar food is still legal to advertise, the question is if there is a known harm to your product as well as a known benefit to your product, is it ethical for you to advertise even if it is legal for you to advertise? Now ethics here, but there are two aspects to this that we want to be really considered. In the American definition the notion of an offering that has value to society at large is requiring some marketers to consider the ethical impact of our decisions. The creation of an offering that has value to customers and society at large is an invitation to make something both profitable and morally worthwhile. Now the parameter morally worthwhile will get interesting and it's one that's open for a bit of debate and discussion because there are many products that you look at and go what were we thinking? Why does this product exist? Who actually needs this product? And I'm thinking here ceramic figurines of Elvis Presley 
or maybe lawn ornaments, garden gnomes, inflatable popular figures of pop culture. There are a whole series of interesting, but are they for the benefit of society, products that exist. So we now want to be thinking not just for our own, and this is where there is a limit and weakness on the British definition, the concept of identify, anticipate, satisfy customer requirements profitably is still organisation centric. Whereas the Americans are at least engaging in this whole idea of ethical consideration where we're looking at the notion of marketing that goes beyond self-interest. And it makes a decision that considers, is this beneficial to society and to our partners? So the big framework question is legality versus ethics and the ethics versus legality. In marketing, the notion of self-regulation comes in when organisations believe that they have a better chance of being ethical en masse if they are left to govern themselves and the organisations are left to apply sanctions to each other. This hasn't always worked, but it has at least been discussed, engaged and considered. The other aspect to ethicality versus legality is the notion that ethical conduct which breaches laws. It's quite unusual to have a bunch of businesses that do this. However, it can be in areas where we're looking at, for instance, in Australia, as recently as the 1970s, the Marriage Act prohibited women from maintaining jobs in the public sector if they were married or pregnant. Now, if you were a private sector organisation, I'm not sure what your legal requirements were, but if they were the same, you as a private sector organisation could turn around and say, you know what, that might be the law, but it's a stupid law and we're going to break it because it's unethical to discriminate based on marital status or pregnancy. And there's been plenty of protocols where organisations have turned around and said we refuse to continue discrimination. The discrimination may be legal, but our for-profit organisation is not going to continue conducting ourselves in that manner. We are going for what is ethical and right. So, legality and ethicality can be connected, but can be opposed. Now the business ethics element. We do have a full subject on ethics. We do teach a range of ethical considerations. What I encourage people to do is to be aware of the codes of conduct that govern their respective areas. If you're in market research, and you continue on as a marketer and you study market research, you will find that the Market Research Society of Australia, the Australian Market Research, Australian Marketing and Social Research Society, has a series of guidelines in terms of how research can be conducted, what type of data can be extracted, how research can be used, the minimum age of a respondent in a research study, a lot of interesting things that make you, that provide you with a moral roadmap. For the record, journalists also have statements of ethics. Most professions have professional ethics and professional guidelines. As marketers, we also have the Australian Market Institute does have a series of marketing ethical guidelines. One of the factors that is consistent in marketing ethics is we are not to mislead the consumer. Now, mislead the consumer is an open-ended statement, but basically one of the things is don't lie. Don't deceive, don't mislead. 
actually have your product give the benefits it promises. And even excluding the ethicality and the morality of that, it's also really good for profit to actually have your product do what it says on the tin and that be something people want. A couple of other areas where the ethics are key and important. Conflicts of interest are a significant factor. And this is probably in terms of your own personal ethics and your own personal code of conduct. The conflict of interest is the one that you're most likely to encounter as a practical, okay, I have to do something about this now type of response. Organisational integrity is also the factor of ethics are not something that takes place in a vacuum. You will find yourself in social situations. Ethics are socially mediated and socially moderated. If you go and actually look at the situational factors, the consumption situation, and consider ethics and personal ethics in light of the consumption situation, you will find that your ethic or compass also tends to vary by who you're with, what do you think the dominant norms are, whether you think you'll be punished or rewarded for ethical or unethical conduct. And these are factors that are important because you can have a strong moral code internally which you don't display externally. And this is a factor that you've got to really watch for because you can believe yourself to be a good person but your actions do not actually hold with that simply because in the consumption situation and the social situation of there are a lot of people doing the wrong thing and I needed to stand up for myself on my own to do the right thing, you may find that your need for social integration, your need for peer approval, interferes with your ability to conduct yourself in an ethical manner because you fear the repercussions of the social group more than you fear the repercussions of being unethical. So this is where things like the corporate culture comes into play where if you're rewarded for misleading and deceiving conduct, it's a lot easier to create an unethical environment if the reward structure supports it. And certainly, if the reward structure punishes whistleblowers and the people who engage in the ethical conduct or draw attention to breaches of the rules, that always makes it tough. Now one of the things that I like to talk about, this is me bringing the lecturer's view in, is the notion of the ethics of success and the frameworks here that there are there is a spectrum, there are four bands that I talk to the win at all costs, it doesn't matter what it takes what matters is victory, everything justifies by the final outcome through to the opposites which is to say integrity and ethics are the priority Everything else is second. Now these are two extremes. These are the absolute extremes. These are the opposite ends of the compass. The it doesn't matter so long as we win versus it doesn't matter if we win or lose, it matters that we conduct ourselves with honour. In between this, this is the, the other alternative splits here are the win at certain costs. Okay, so we'll cut a few corners, don't be strictly adhering to the truth. In your product offer, make a couple of you know, outlandish, outrageous statements that you never expect anyone to take seriously, but you know will colour their judgement, make their opinion, make their opinion of your product more positive. On the other side of that coin is the counterpoint of the win at acceptable costs. Victory is still important, but there are standards to be held, there are norms to be enforced, there are morals to be kept in check. But victory is still a parameter and a priority. You still need to make the sale, you still need to have the outcome but you are very keen to ensure that it's done 
within the law and as close to the rules as possible. And the extremist position of honour above victory. It's better to lose the fight and to play fair than to have won the fight and play dirty. Again, this is a spectrum. How you feel about it is a moral judgment that you get to make for yourself. All right, the ethics of the marketing mix. Now, we haven't brought you into the marketing mix in detail yet, so your heads up here is you're going to get taught the ethics, then you're going to have to actually practically apply the ethics because when you do the marketing mix for your marketing plan, I'm going to expect you to actually conduct yourself ethically. That you will engage in marketing plans that are honest, that your attribution of other people's work is accurate, your views and opinions and the way you present your material is with integrity. And we do this so that we can actually trust you. We expect ethics and honour so that we can apply trust and we will benefit from it. But the new marketing mix, one of the issues that we have an opportunity to pursue is this concept of the offers that have value for society at large. This is where we have the opportunity to say, can we create something that makes the world a better place, that solves a social problem and turns a profit? Can we have communication that is empowering, positive, powerful, guides and enhances social change, rejects stereotypes, breaks negative social norms. Can we do all these things? Yes, we can. So we actually have the ability in the marketing mix to be positive, to make good things, to price appropriately for resources, price according to wealth, price according to access, to make certain that when we create something that will have a market demand and a market need and we don't target people who can't afford it and we don't try to take resources from those who most need it. So it is entirely possible to be ethical in your marketing mix and successful and profitable. So, some of the exemplar key ethical decisions you need to make. Product safety. Seriously, this is one of the most basic ethical things you can do, and that is use good quality materials. Check that the fresh meat you are sourcing that labels itself as cow is actually cow, not horse. To check, hybrid, to comply with safety regulations, to ensure that your non flammable products are, in fact, non flammable, to make certain that. Designs are safe, products are non-fatal, all these issues, all things that can be done and should be done. Pricing, again there's a couple of aspects here. One is the predatory pricing approach and this is about ensuring that when we have the resources to basically undercut our competitors and drive them out of the market that we don't, that we compete fairly and we don't cheat. For example, the number of times that major, major retail chains identify the prices of their near small green grocer competitors, fresh fruit and vegetable prices in particular, and then match or beat the sale of the day and keep driving down the prices until that near competitor goes broke. That is not fair pricing. And the manager at each store can turn around and resist the unethical conduct. They can say no. They cannot price below their competitor. They cannot try and drive their competitor out. Finally, on the mix elements here, promotion. Do not mislead. Do not deceive. Do not lie. Really don't lie. Trade practices that will thump you legally. Ethically, you're also a moron. You are really stupid. 
if you cannot make your product meet the needs of the market, you're a bad marketer, go home and reconsider your life choices. You can be ethical in your conduct in promotion. You don't have to go and come up with lies, deceit, or any other way if you've got a product that's worth having. If you don't have a product that's worth having, go back to the drawing board. Go fix that part of the marketing mix. Go make the product useful. So, finally in the things you can do in the marketing mix, ethical availability, ethical distribution. One of the critical elements that we've discovered over time is that the distribution channels can be used to discriminate against markets. If you identify a lower socioeconomic band and only sell them expensive processed food because that kind of person isn't worth servicing with fresh fruit and vegetables, you're unethical, to say the least. Two, you're not really doing your profit any favours. And three, you are contributing to the societal problem of obesity because you're not actually making decent products available. If you refuse, and now this is an interesting challenge though, I can hear you say, segmentation versus making products available ethically. You don't have to serve every market, but if you are deliberately underserving a market for reasons unethical, you really need to be spoken to. Also, you need to be stopping and thinking, saying, <laughs> Am I missing a market opportunity to actually do good and turn a profit? Societal responsibility as a question, we'll talk a bit. You'll hear the term corporate social responsibility. If you spend a hundred dollars with us, we'll give ten cents to charity. Yeah. Why don't you just give well the question isn't why doesn't the consumer give the hundred dollars to charity? Because the consumer wants the product. It's the we'll give ten cents and pretend that we're actually doing something significant versus we will go and how should we say? If you're offering a tiny sliver that you're using for tax return purposes and the person who gains the most out of your conduct is you, chances are you're not being ethical or socially responsible in your product decision here. Same way that whilst it's great in times and points that environmentalism has led major corporations to making huge sweeping changes to the way they run their business, if the reason they made the huge sweeping changes was let's go and make more cash and profit, it's cheaper to be sustainable than not, yes, it's, it's ethical insofar as they're being sustainable and not harming the environment, but let's not go give them a medal for being socially responsible if the only reason that they got out of bed that morning to make the change was more money, more profit. It's an acceptable motive, a profit motive for sustainability is not a bad idea, it's just not one that you can get to probe around saying, check us out, we've got great ethics. So the advice, and this is my advice to you as marketing students and future marketers. Step one, play fair. You are better than this. You do not need to cheat because you are good at what you do. Cheating says you are a bad marketer. You don't know marketing. So, if you're bad at it, then of course you're going to need to cheat. But seriously, who likes to get up in the morning and go, I'm bad at what I do for a living. I'm going to cheat. You are far better off playing fair. You're good enough to do it. Secondly, conduct yourself as a marketer. Think like a marketer. Act like a marketer. Meet the needs of the market. Meet the needs of the wants. And you will find that there is a profit to be had. If you are solving a problem, and the problem 
is create the solution to this problem is creation benefit to society. The market will find a way to sustain you because you are doing the right thing by society, and society is kind of fond of that. Thirdly, lose with honour, win with integrity. Unjust profits are short term. Enron, who bragged about being the smartest people in the room, is no more. You will get caught. The bad, the unethical, the immoral always get caught because they're bad at what they do. If you have to cheat, you're not good enough. If you don't have to cheat, you're better. Honour can be afforded because you're good enough to pay the extra, to have the appropriate pricing strategies, to be socially beneficial. Dishonourable conduct is done because you're just simply not good enough. And if you're not good enough and you're having to resort to cheating, you're going to lose because you will be beaten by someone who is both good and better. And that's your ethics briefing. See ya week six and bring any questions you happen to have with regards to the exam or the content covered thus far.